Hi friends, welcome back to another episode. You'll notice today I'm all alone. Um, I'll explain that in just a second, but let me press record over here on our podcast recording and we'll get to it. Hello, welcome back to Called to Homeschool. We are on episode number 51 today. And today you get just me. This is Karin. Megan's not here with me today, unfortunately. And I want to tell you a little bit about why, but um, it might be a little self-explanatory. Right now we're doing some social distancing because of the pandemic going on around this world, which is a big scary thing. Um, So Megan and I couldn't be together. We tried to do a Zoom call and do this together, but we had too many internet glitches. And so today we're just, I'm just recording this one alone and she's going to record the next one alone on her own. And you'll get a, you'll get us a little different this month. And hopefully in a couple of weeks, we can get back together again and bring you our regularly scheduled and recorded episodes as we normally do. It's not quite as fun with just one of us. I'm kind of bummed about that, but that's what we get today. So today, I get to tell you all about science. And I do love science very much, and I'm super excited to share with you some content on that today. So today's episode, I'm calling Simple Science Activities, and I wanna share just just some really fun and easy things that you can do with your kids while you're at home, while you're stuck at home, while you're homeschooling, um, all different kinds of reasons and times to do science. It doesn't have to just be for homeschooling. It can just be for the fun of it. Um, But first of all, I want to tell you a couple reasons why I love science so much. Um, My kids love science. I love doing science. It's um, such a fun way to learn. Um, I love doing experiments because experiments will usually teach simple principles of science in a really exciting way. They can get really messy sometimes, but they're not all messy. A lot of people are scared of doing experiments because they don't want to deal with the mess or the extra hassle of doing them. But my opinion, mess is good for kids once in a while. Uh, It's worth it for them to just get their hands in and feel and smell and experience a little bit of mess once in a while. I think it's good for all of us. And Um, They do love it. And part of that reason is because of that sensory experience. It's so good for kids to have multi-sensory experiences while learning. And I've done a lot of reading on this topic, and so it's something I'm actually pretty passionate about. And the reason I love this and the reason it's so important for kids is because when you involve multiple senses in learning activities, you're going to remember it a whole lot more. Kids learn so much better when they're involved in the learning process and do it in an engaging way. And there's this quote that I've always loved. It's by Benjamin Franklin, and it says, Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. And I love that, and I think that that's so true. If somebody's just saying something to you to teach you a concept, you're way less likely to remember it or to learn from it and most likely will forget it unless you're involved in some way, unless you have some senses involved. If you taste or touch or smell or, or watch some sort of cool thing happen, some sort of reaction happen, then you're going to remember it a whole lot more. And it's the same with kids. Any kind of learning activity that involves multiple senses, they're going to stay with them longer. So some other benefits of science experiments is... Um, teaching these hands-on things, they're going to learn some problem solving and they're going to have an increased curiosity about what's going on. They're going to wonder and they're going to ask questions and and try to figure things out. And a lot of times, you know, if you're doing science experiments, they give them a chance to, to guess at what's going to happen before you do the experiment or show them the demonstration because that, that lets them be a lot more involved in that process. And if you give them a chance to try and test and have a little trial and error with that experiment, even the better, because things aren't going to always turn out perfectly. A lot of the experiments that we do in our house fail a couple of times before we get it right. And, and that's a great learning experience for all of us. So it's, it's okay if those fail and if you have to try it again, because that's part of the learning. So I want to highlight for you guys today some of uh, the top experiments and science activities that are on my website. 
and and then share with you a couple of other favorites that we've done over the years. And I'll, I'll share links to all of these in the show notes that you can find them easily and find one that you want to try at your house. The number one post of pretty much all time ever on my website is called the Periodic Table Battleship. And it's not an experiment, but it is a very fun science activity and very easy to put together. Uh, if you've played Battleship, the game, the board game with your kids, it's just like that, but with periodic tables. And it's so much fun and it gets them learning about the periodic table in the process of just fit, playing a fun game. And they can learn about the elements and learn about the structure of the periodic table in the process. And it's so much fun. We love that site. And this this or that post. And this post has um, been featured on a lot of really big sites and it's, it's gone viral a few times. It goes through little cycles and we're in a, we're in a high right now with everyone homeschooling. They're looking for fun ways to teach their kids about these harder subjects. And that's one of the things I love to do on my site is teach hard subjects in a new and fun way. Um, another really popular one is a really simple, it's called a penny cleaning experiment. And this is a cool one to do with kids. You just get out a handful of pennies and get out different substances from your kitchen fridge or um, under your sink or something and put the pennies in these different substances and see which one will clean the pennies the best. We've done it with um, lemon juice or dish soap, um, ketchup, soy sauce, different things like that. Try a few different things, put them in little bowls or cups and, and let them soak for a little bit and then rub them off and you can see which one works the best. And then talk about what's in those, what ingredients are in there that helped to clean those pennies. And I give you some tips in my post about that, but it's a really, really fun and really simple one that you don't have to gather any supplies outside of your home, which is a challenge right now. And um, you don't have to spend any money on it at all. Another, so that's a really fun one. Another really popular one on my site is the apple browning experiment where you cut up an apple and um, talk about why an apple browns after it sits out for a little while, but also you put it in different, slice it up and put it into some different bowls. And again, choose some substances that you think will prevent apples from browning. Um, you can encourage them to choose lemon juice or another citrus type thing because you know that that'll work already, but then let the kids choose some other things as well. Like we, I think my kids did milk and baking soda and other edible type things that they could put on the apple to see if it will not brown and then talk about oxidation with them and how that works and what, what causes it and what can prevent it. It's a really fun one to do with young kids, especially. Another awesome one, this is a showstopper one, and this is called Elephant Toothpaste. I know it's a really funny name, but it's so much fun. And this is a reaction, a chemical reaction, that is so much fun to watch, but also to kind of get your hands in afterwards as well. And you combine yeast with hydrogen peroxide, and you have to have the stronger peroxide that they use um, in salons. So that's a trickier one to get, but you can get it at any um, beauty supply store or on Amazon. And it creates this foamy reaction where the, the foam just pours and pours and pours out. And it's so much fun to watch. And, and it also creates an exothermic reaction, which is, means that it heats up and it gets warmer. And so it's, it's a really cool one to talk about. And you can learn about the reasons behind it and what happens. And I explain all of that in my post about it as well. And a couple of others, we, I don't know if you've ever heard of Ublik. Ublik is a really cool thing you can do with just cornstarch and water. This is a really common and popular one, but you can talk about non-Newtonian fluids with them and get a little deeper into it, which is something that's not really a liquid and not really a solid. Because if you've ever played with that mixture, sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's runny. And it's just, it's just a really cool thing that just kind of doesn't seem to make sense. And so kids really love that one. And it's a great big mess, but you can do that in your backyard and prevent the mess on the inside, which is a good thing. And then another fun one is making dry ice bubbles. And we love to do that. Maybe a little trickier right now, but when you can get back to the store and get a block of dry ice, it's, it's definitely worth trying this one out. Um, some experiments we love to do are ones that have reactions, like chemical reactions, such as baking soda and vinegar. That's a very easy one that you probably have those two ingredients on hand. And um, some easy ones you can do with that are bottle rockets, where you just use a plastic water bottle and a cork or something to stop it with, 
and put a little packet of baking soda in and some vinegar in and it will just fly and explode up and it's so much fun. When we do that, when my kids want to just do it over and over again for a good hour and it'll keep them entertained for a long time and it's easy and it's safe and they'll have so much fun with it. Another simple one with that is also in a water bottle and with a balloon. And if you put some baking soda into the balloon and some vinegar in the bottle, and then you put the balloon on top, the balloon, the baking soda will drop down inside the bottle and the balloon will blow up all on its own. And it's so fun to watch and kind of amazes the kids, another showstopper kind of one that they'll just be wowed over. And probably likely you have those things at home as well right now, which is a great thing. Anything to not have to spend money or to leave the house right now is a bonus, right? And then a final one we love is just a simple volcano. You can make some salt dough and wrap it around a bottle and then fill the bottle with baking soda and vinegar and have a big volcano reaction. And that one has been actually my top post the last couple of weeks since this, this whole stay at home order has happened. And I've actually really loved that because if you think about you know, people are at home and they want to do something fun with their kids and making a volcano seems like a fun first science experiment to try. And it is really fun, really simple. And you'll have all those ingredients at your house that you can throw it together really easily. So I, I love that one. And I love that um, parents are getting involved with their kids at this time. Um, I know this is a challenging time and it's so different than what we're used to going through. So anything you can do to really um, spend time engaging with your kids and doing some fun activities is, is a really positive and beneficial thing right now. Kids' lives are disrupted. Our lives are disrupted. Everything just feels different and a little scary. And so do some fun science with them because it'll just brighten the mood up a little bit in your house and prevent some of that boredom and monotony that you may be experiencing. Um, if you don't want messy... Here's a couple of non-messy experiments you can try. We have a lot of magnet experiments on my website. I have some fun magnet marble mazes that are really cool to try. Um, some levitating magnets where if you stack magnets in opposite directions, they'll, they'll kind of levitate on top of each other, which is so cool to watch. And another fun one is a magnet pendulum. If you put a magnet on a string and let it swing around other magnets below it, It'll start creating little swinging patterns that are so fun to watch, and kids really love those ones. And you can do science and not get your hands dirty and still have a lot of fun. Some other ones are um, experiments with energy. We love to do things with kinetic and potential energy. Um, potential is, you know, when you wind something up and it's about to release and you know it's filled with that that energy that is potentially going to be released and then once you let it go it moves and does something cool like for instance we have these rubber band paddle boats that I just love they've been one of my favorite things we've done where we just used some cardboard and cut boats boat shapes out and wrapped them in duct tape and made a little paddle that you spin by using a rubber band and a smaller piece of cardboard and you stick it in the bathtub and they just they just motor across the whole tub. And they're so much fun to play with. And that can be a good indoor activity when you can't leave the house and you want to keep kids entertained, but also want to teach them something. Because these, these projects, while they're so fun, they also all have educational principles behind them that they can learn in the process. Another kinetic potential energy experiment is a fun one with, it's called a candle seesaw. And with this one, if you light a candle on both ends, you know that term, and, and you can suspend it by a needle, it'll start swinging and just going up and down and up and down um, endlessly, basically, until you blow it out. And it's really cool. It's really fun to watch and um, a fun one to help them understand that concept of energy and motion. Um, if you have a backyard that you can explore right now without going too far from your home, we have a lot of nature experiments and activities that you can do as well. Um, there's a fun activity called leaf transpiration where you can learn about the breathing and the water in leaves. That's a neat one. Or you can do make a, a human sundial, go outside every hour and trace your shadow and watch the pattern of how it moves around throughout the day and the size of it. It's a really neat one and a good demonstration for kids to understand the motion of the sun around the earth. So there's just a few ideas. I have 
um, hundreds more. I, I kid you not, hundreds. We really, really love science at our house. So I'll put links to all of these in the show notes for you guys. If you want to check any of those out or any others, stop on by Teach Beside Me and you can get some great hands-on science activities to do with your kids. Now, I know we probably all missed Meg today, but I hope that you found some value in this. And I hope that all of you are doing well and are safe and are healthy in your homes and um, staying positive through this hard time. We're here to help. We... um, we want to help you as, um, as experienced homeschooling parents and having a little bit of normalcy to our lives where we're not, you know, we're not disrupted. It has been a benefit, but, um, but also know that if you have any concerns or questions or worries, Megan and I both are here to help you in any way that you need us and stay safe and stay positive. And we will see you again next time. Bye-bye.